So it's very important that it's not about right or wrong. Don't get yourself hooked up with that. It's like you test a hypothesis, the, the, the supervisor in the room, your patient will always let you know where to go. I'm, I'm just here to help you listen to the true supervisor over time. Um, so earlier you talked about social taboos and before you came, they were talking about you have to make ISTPP what's natural. But uh, could I frame two different mindsets? So the old pattern is social taboos where everybody collectively covers up anxiety and keeps up appearances and pretenses. That's yep. what we're socially conditioned. Absolutely. And this new pattern is trying to call out those defenses, the masks that everybody hides behind, <laughs> and then slowly try to redirect to mobilize for feelings and emotions. Uh, you've labeled that as asking for unconscious supervision. Uh, could that also be framed as process approach, where you're trying to trust underlying processes from the unconscious and helping them uh, appear through experimentation, discovery, exploration, testing? It's a really a form of iterative sequential iterative. experimentation, mm -hmm. right? We're conducting a series of experiments and it's iterative and every patient response is refining our understanding. So our knowledge is always changing in response to the unconscious and conscious feedback from the patient. So it's very dynamic. Well, you could think of it as a relational epistemology. Mm -hmm. It's not like I know an object, but the person is actually informing and changing my thinking and understanding. Then the knowledge base is uh, in the person's unconscious, but also in the relational dynamic instead That's of right. some culturally That's imposed right, right or That's wrong. Because right. the student will be, the patient will be giving us feedback through conscious feedback, uh, unconscious, uh, unconscious defenses, unconscious anxiety, unconscious feelings, uh, unconscious defenses, unconscious transference, right? So we're getting multiple modes of unconscious feedback that's supervising us so that we can find out what's the unconscious logic driving the conscious illogic. One of the things I sometimes do is when I notice there's a dissonance between what people say consciously and what their behavior is, which is di a dissonance. So then I that's sometimes right. try to point out that the behavior that's uh, not matching their conscious claim. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you say you want this, right? You say you want a closer relationship with your husband, uh, but then you had this affair. So it sounds like you're actually at war with your own desire. Remember what the patient says, what the patient is conscious of, is the result of defenses. Defenses remove everything that's uncomfortable, right? Defenses remove everything that's uncomfortable. Whatever is left is what we're conscious of. Defenses remove everything that's uncomfortable. Whatever is left is what we're conscious of. So the patient can only give a conscious report based on what defenses exclude. So if we listen only to manifest content, we're only hearing what, what the defenses let get through. Everything else is on the other side of that filter. So we're, we're having to listen to what the patient says, but then we're also having to listen to see, okay, what's, what are the defenses warding off? First of all, what are the defenses and what are those defenses warding off? What's, what's the information that's being excluded from the patient's report? What's the information that's being excluded from the patient's report? You, you seem to be at war with yourself. Yeah, do you notice that too? And that sense you're reminding the patient what's what's on the other side of the filter. Could that thought be underestimating your true potential? I well, never thought about that. So would it make sense for us to look underneath that thought so we can discover your true potential, right? Kim, it seems like a fact, and we're having to help them see, actually, it's not a fact. It's a defense. Uh, it's a way you're uh, talking to yourself the way teachers did. It's a way you're relating to yourself as your father did. You're probably even afra afraid that I would think this about you, the transference. He doesn't realize that that defense has a price, that it's actually causing his depression. All that's happening outside is awareness, right? Defense is room of everything that's uncomfortable. Whatever is left is what we're conscious of. What's the information that's being excluded from the patient's report? 